Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are bringing you along on our Grand USA Rail Experience. We will start in Chicago and head west to Seattle. We'll ride down to Los Angeles and across to New Orleans and then head north again to New York City before arriving back in Chicago to finish our trip. We will be riding the Empire Builder, the Coast Starlight, the Sunset Limited, the Crescent, and the Lakeshore Limited. This trip will take us 16 nights to circumnavigate the U.S. and see some really amazing sights. So grab the beverage of your choice and join us for this amazing experience. Our first train ride is on the Empire Builder. It is the northernmost train route in the US and it will take us from Chicago to Seattle. After spending some time in the Metropolitan Lounge in Chicago, we are ready to board. Our sleeper car attendant has definitely taken her job seriously. She set out some flowers and some magazines for us to read. We quickly walk down the hall and find our roomette. We get settled in because we do not want to miss out on the beautiful views of Chicago as we leave the city. And then, not long after we leave Chicago, we're ready for our first meal on the train, which is dinner. Our dining car attendant has set the tables up with white tablecloths and flowers to make this an even more enjoyable experience. A little bit of everything. There mm -hmm. we go. That's cheesy. All right, I got the flat iron steak medium well today with the baked potato. And this is new. They brought A1 sauce. So I actually love A1 sauce. I'm going to use this quite liberally. Let's see how that goes. So our main entrees arrive and we both dig in and enjoy not just the meal but the views from the windows along the way. We have a little time as we sit here and eat. We get to watch as the city views fade away and we head more into the rural parts of Illinois as we're enjoying our great meal on the train. We do have traditional dining on this train, which gives us a few more options. We do let our food digest a little bit before we dig into these desserts. I got the carrot cake and Rob got the cheesecake. Well, one man's trash is another man's treasure, as they say, because I was walking, <laughs> I was walking from the observation car back to our room and I had to walk through the dining car. Dining car attendant said to me, hey, do you want some wine? I was like, I already had dinner. She said, well, we, we poured some extra and we can't pour it back into the bottle. She said, take this back to your room with you. So red wine <laughs> tonight, <laughs> extra wine here for me tonight in the room. So I guess I didn't want to turn it down. All right, we just pulled into our first fresh, fresh air break. We are in Winona, Minnesota. Minnesota. So we've already zipped through Wisconsin and through Illinois. We weren't in there very long, were we? Yeah, the first fresh air break is quite a ways after you mm -hmm. board on this. Uh, Empire yeah. Builder, so be so. ready for that. <laughs> okay, so we were preparing for bed, but um, we just.
just got an alert, emergency weather alert, that said there's a tornado warning in the area until 10 p.m. It is 9.30 and it is lightning out. Um, we've seen that for a little bit here, but didn't realize we had storms out there. Um, so we'll be taking, the train is still moving pretty quickly here, so I don't know if we're gonna be moving out of that, um, but we'll stay up for a little bit longer at sea. <laughs> All right, you can probably hear the hail now hitting. Um, we can hear it. We're still watching, we're still moving, and we're making our next stop, so we're still progressing. <laughs> wow. All right, the storm has subsided, thankfully for us, and we have got our bed made up. I'm about to head up here to the upstairs. And we're gonna go to bed, wake up in the morning, and we will see you in the morning. Good night. Good morning. Slept pretty well, even though it was raining outside. And came down for breakfast. Both got the eggs. I got uh, sausage, and Allie got bacon. So we're gonna dig in and get to seat and get our day started right. Down. Price is right. I know, just like it's 5 o'clock. I seen Fargo this morning, 5 o'clock. I said, well, there it is. I told her snow on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> and she said, you're dreaming. I said, no, no, look at it. <laughs> Okay, so we've gotten the burger lots of times, but this time around, um, they offered us bacon on the burger, so we're having a bacon cheese burger. Look at that, that looks really good, and it smells really good. It just came off the grill, so I'm gonna doll this thing up and eat it. Very good. people ask us what we do while we're on the train for so long and we do try to spend as much time as possible relaxing and taking in the views of the country. One of the best places to do that is the observation car which is also known as the sightseer lounge. This car is open to all train passengers to enjoy.
All right, guys, you know what time it is. It's time for a room tour. We start out here with the lower seats where we spend most of our time sitting. And these two lower seats, we use this these two bars down here at the bottom for it to recline. You recline each side and that's what makes your bed for at night. There are several amenities here in the room. There is a nice armrest and there's also the air vents on the side right by the window. There is also a, a push to call attendant button. And then there's also the light button and that does control the ceiling light and the night light. You can also have it all the way off. There's also the music control, which doesn't really control the music. It actually controls the announcements made overhead. You do have a reading light on this side, which you control, and you can also move it up and down um, for a little direction. Now on this side, move my bag here, you will see these are the steps to go up to the upper bunk, which we'll look at in just a minute. There is a trash bin on this side as well down below, nice big trash bin, and they do, they can empty that if it gets a little bit too full for you, but these are the steps that Rob is gonna use to get up to his upper bunk. We also have a nice big mirror here, which is very helpful for getting ready in the mornings. And there is also a night light or an extra reading light for up above if Rob wants to read from up above. And then right next to that are, is the air control or the air vent. And there is a little black tab control right here where you are going to be able to close the vents if you pull it on one side. There's still a little bit of air that comes out, but then if you push it, then it'll be full blast. So if you're up above, and you wanna be a little bit cooler, then you're gonna to wanna to have those opened up. We also get washcloths and hand towels provided to us, and the shower towels are provided in the actual shower stall. This hook here, they do provide a couple of hangers. You can use this coat hook or the other hook to hang things from if you like um, on the hanger or just on the hook if you want. And then on this side, you also have this strap here if you want to um, put any bags or anything like that to kind of hold back. Now this area here, um, is kind of open and you can store as we you see we've stored our toiletry bags in there um and it's just a real thin kind of small area so there's not a lot of ton a ton of room for storing things then on this side you'll see the push so you push that down and then you lift and pull for reclining the seat there is storage underneath both of the seats down below so you've got plenty of room there to store your things on this side it's an identical seat except for the amenities that are on the headrest over here you do still have a reading light here as well just like you do on the other side but then on this side you've got this air control switch this black button here and you're going to turn that either cooler or warmer or just leave it on normal not going to change the temperature a ton but it is going to give you a little bit of a difference there there's also uh, one outlet here so as you can see we have our handy dandy four usb um, adapter here we use that all over the world and it's perfect We've got blackout curtains as well down below now in a super liner like this. There's only windows down below, not windows above like in a view liner, but you can black out the room with those curtains and just kind of close those up. Now, if you're looking to either do some work or you want a table in your room or you want to eat a meal in your room like we do sometimes, you've got this nice table that folds out. Now, they do have these check this checkerboard kind of built into it. I wish they provided the pieces as well so you can play <laughs> some checkers while you're here but this table is nice and big gives you plenty of room for both people to use if you wanted to both have computers or ipads or whatever out you could both use it and it sto stores fairly easily back into that slot now quick peek here up above this is the upper bunk you just pull on the latch bring it down and it locks into place you there's another coat hook up here so there are two of them up in this area and then we'll also take a look here at this little netting back here um, does uh, provide a space for you to store snacks like you can see Rob has got here his snacks if he wants to have something after I've gone to bed and there's also a little bin back here a little basket where he keeps his glasses and his cell phone at night so he doesn't roll over onto them if they're stored in that netting up against the wall so there is 
just enough room up here for him, not a ton of room to move around. If you've seen our other videos on the channel with all the measurements and all the information, um, you'll get a little bit more if you want a deeper dive into this room tour. This um, right here is kind of like a seat belt for the person in the upper bunk. The trains do rock around uh, quite a bit, so you're gonna wanna have these uh, in place so that you do not <laughs> roll out of that upper bunk. That is gonna hurt if you fall out. Now, we're going to go downstairs here and we're going to take a look at one of the restrooms. Now, in this style, uh, in this view liner two, we're going to have a little bit smaller bathrooms than you have in the view liner one. So in the view liner two, the bathrooms uh, do have a call attendant button just like in the one, but as you can see, it's a much smaller, uh, more confined space. There are bars to hang on to, which is always smart to do. There's also a baby changing table. You've got uh, paper towels available as well as tissues in here and an outlet. There is somewhere to hang a towel and a coat rack if you need to use that as well. And there are seat covers too. Don't forget to lock the door or someone's gonna walk in on you. And there's also, the water doesn't stay on for very long. You do have to press it in order to get the water to come out. So just remember to keep pressing that and you can get more water out. And if you need cups for brushing your teeth, those are provided as well. Now let's take a look at the shower, which they also call a dressing room, but it's mostly a used as a shower, I think, for the most part. I'm going to walk right into the shower area here. It's a good enough space. Again, do not forget to lock that door or someone's going to walk in on you. Um, it's just enough room to do what you need to do here in the shower. Um, there's just enough pressure, and you also are able to change it to cold or hot water. There is a curtain that you pull, a big, thick curtain curtain that you pull and there is a bar in here and it is highly recommended that you hang on to that bar if you are showering while the train is moving. They do provide you in these boxes you will find um, bars of soap and there's extra washcloths in there as well as the towels to, um, to use in the shower and of course there is an attendant call button should you slip and fall or anything like that. Oh, we just got to see Glacier National Park. We did walk down to the other uh, hallway, kind of where the bedrooms were, and there was a lot of people in the hallway just taking pictures. It was great. We got there just as the sun was setting, and we kind of got that afterglow moment, so it was just perfect. So in this instance, it was kind of nice that the train was two hours late.
okay, everyone's excited because we stopped here for a fresh air break in Wenatchee. Wenatchee. I'm not 100% sure if that's right, but Wenatchee. And um, we've lost part of our train on purpose. We dropped them off in Spokane and they're off to Portland and we're off to Seattle. So we've got, we're down to one engine and they took the sleeper car from the back and some coach uh, cars as well. So we're down to a much shorter train, about half the size, right? Yeah. So not too far away from Seattle and so we are in Washington state and it's snowing. Uh, I was not expecting to see snow in the middle of May in Washington. <laughs>
All right, we just got off the Empire Builder and we're gonna be staying in Seattle for a few days before we head on our next train journey. So we usually stay at the Embassy Suites, but we wanted to stay a little closer to some of the action, uh, like the, the market and so forth. So we stayed at the Hyatt at Olive 8 and it looks really, really nice. So recommend this one as well. Have a nice uh, big bathroom here and then a hallway that leads into a really big room with king bed, large TV if we end up watching some TV, great desk for us to get a little work done, and another sitting area. So we're going to unpack here and just uh, kind of relax from that. Actually, it was a really relaxing ride on the Empire Builder, but we're going to get settled in and go see what Seattle has to offer. All right, we're finishing up here and tomorrow we're gonna get some rest because tomorrow we are gonna rent a car and we're gonna head up to Mount Rainier National Park. Hey guys, I wanna welcome you to Paradise. We are in the state of Washington and today we are exploring Mount Rainier National Park. So we came down from up there and Rob came down ahead of me and I've lost track of them. We're going to do some pictures down here. It looks like we've got a, a creek bed. And we've got uh, hopefully what will be uh, Rainier up on the top there. So I'll show you here as we continue to go down this little hill here. Okay, so I did find Rob. We're down here at the rapids. He's checking out some spots. We're trying to see if we can peek around uh, the trees that are over my shoulder to see if we can um, see Mount Rainier from the water here as well. That would be a really cool picture. So we're trying to give that a shot. If not, um, I guess at worst, we had a nice little hike down the hill and um, we got to uh, enjoy this nice peaceful spot. So we stopped here at this viewpoint and as you can see in all its glory there it is Mount Rainier right behind me over my shoulder Rob taking some pictures you can see him there um, but this is a great spot to stop it's a viewpoint right before you get to paradise there's uh, two three about three pullouts uh, parking areas uh, to stop in but the best one is the very first uh, stop point um, but the best view is from the second parking area when you come in, um, perfect spot for you to take some pictures there.
All right, we're headed down to Myrtle Fall down the steps. You can kind of see over my shoulder here um, the steps and they kind of slant down even though it's paved and has wooden beams to help you with the steps. I would definitely make sure that you have the right footwear here because you could really hurt yourself coming down these steps. All right, so I will say that um, we just came from Myrtle Falls and the Edith Creek Overlook. And I tell you, this park is really quite the show off. There's lots of great things to see here. And this is relatively um, easy hike. It is kind of uphill the way here, but the way back, uh, good news, all downhill. So we stopped here at Reflection Lake. Um, it is a little breezy today. So as you can see, there is no reflection, but you can see the lovely Mount Rainier in the background there. This is a really just such a beautiful setting. I brought my clothes, changed my clothes, did some pictures. I'll show you some of those. And let's take a look around here a little bit more. Rob's uh, exploring down the way here. Uh, we'll show you a little bit about what he's doing too. We uh, hiked down here into Tipsu Lake and then also came over and checked out Little Tipsu. Um, trying to check out what's the best view. We're getting the backside of uh, Mount Rainier. I'm going to show you guys around here just a little bit um, and see what it's like. And we're trying to decide which one we like better, Little Tipsu or Tipsu on the other side. Hey guys, we've arrived at North Cascades National Park. We're gonna take a look around and see what we can find here. Our first stop here in North Cascades National Park is the Sterling Monroe Trail and this is a really great trail because it's only 100 meters long and it's on a boardwalk, uh, very easy, uh, wheelchair accessible, kid friendly. So anyone can come look at this. If you're coming here and you don't have a lot of time, this is a great one to visit because it's only 100 meters long and you have amazing views behind me and not many people know about this so you're going to have this place pretty much all to yourself. We're here, this is Labor Day 
and the park is actually pretty busy and we're the only people here. So everyone just kind of drives past and heads to Diablo Lake first thing. But uh, make sure you stop at the visitor center, come here and check it out because this is a really great viewpoint. So we got off at the Gorge Overlook and walked to the couple. There's uh, two overlooks and then there's uh, a trail actually at the second overlook. Um, it's not too bad. I think it's about a third of a mile. So it's not too shabby. I'll show you what that looks like here. But uh, I hope there's something good at the end. Let's see. Know about you guys but uh, mountain air is like the cleanest and the freshest and here in the North Cascades National Park I'm telling you this is some of the freshest uh, cleanest smelling air I've smelled in a really long time um, it's absolutely amazing it feels great the temperature is really good today is in the 80s which is funny because we've been in three digit temperatures for several months now for a couple months so it feels good to have a little bit cooler temperatures but look at how beautiful all around me here um, and really fresh mountain air it kind of smells a little bit like Christmas out here because of the evergreens Okay, so it turns out that the trail just brings you back to the parking lot. But that's okay because it was a beautiful scenic view as you could see um, coming along the road here and it was so pretty. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. are doing a lake trail and we're gonna bring you guys along with us but we are doing this one because well we wanted to kill a little bit of time to get a little bit better view um, as far as the Sun is concerned lighting over at Diablo Lake so we might as well do this uh, nice trail it's a mile each way two miles round trip so uh, it looks beautiful already So we made it down to Rainy Lake Trail. Check it out right here over my shoulder. I'll show you a little bit more around here.
So you come to this um, high point here, you can kind of just walk off the trail a little bit. I'll show you around in just a second, but a lot of people up here doing pictures, you can come up here, It'd be a beautiful place to do like Instagram pictures um, if you're looking for a really good spot here. We popped in at Diablo Lake Overlook. This is probably the most popular spot in the whole park. So it was pretty full. Uh, we did have to wait in line. It's really busy today, Labor Day. Um, we did have to wait in line to even get a parking spot, but we popped in here. We were able to look around and take some pictures. We'll show you guys all around here. Okay, so we are off here in Salinas for a fresh air break, stretching our legs out right here on the platform for just a few minutes, and we'll be hopping back on and we're gonna be having some lunch, and then we're gonna give you guys a little tour of our room. Okay, it is lunchtime. We're just pulling out of Salinas, California, and I thought what better thing than to have a nice hamburger. So I'm gonna eat my burger, got all the veggies here, got cheese, and this um, coleslaw for Amtrak is probably one of my favorites. Um, it's got a nice sweet um, taste to it. And then you also get Terra chips with it as well. Um, those are really good too. And you know, I've had the burger several times on Amtrak and I've never um, gotten onions and I absolutely love red onions. So I'm excited about having the lettuce, tomato and onion on there. And then they give you little packets, got some mayonnaise, and some ketchup and there's also some mustard and Rob is actually got the same exact thing. He's got a burger as well with the chips and the onions and all the veggies and his coleslaw too. So we're gonna prepare these and eat these. We decided we'd drink some water, got some cold water also from the dining car. So we're gonna do that, enjoy the views and continue on this incredible journey on the Coast Starlight. So we are in the observation car and as you can see the windows going um, past me here but we're about to go right by the ocean so I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so we're on the Coast Starline. I mentioned earlier I would give you a room tour. I know you've been patient, so <laughs> here is the room tour. We are in a roomette, which is meant for two people. And uh, during the daytime, you've got your seats set up here. So here's one seat. Okay, and then on this side, you will also find the steps. This is step one, step two to go up to the top bunk, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So that's that's that. Now at this seat, you also have 
here's your control area. This is to turn the reading light on and off. This is to call the attendant, you hold it. And then here is your ceiling lights. So turn the ones overhead or tap to turn the night light off or here for just off all the way around. Okay. Um, then we've got our little table here. It folds up and has two flaps that open up. So it gives you plenty of space here. If you saw us eating breakfast or lunch earlier, you would have seen the table out and us eating there. And then directly across from this seat, we've got this guy right here. And at this seat, there's nothing here on the side, but there is a closet right here next to it. It's a small closet, but you've got some towels here. They give you a wash washcloth and hand towels, and the big towels are down in the shower itself. And then you get a couple of hangers. You can see them moving there, uh, where you can use to hang coats or whatever you need. And if you can fit anything else in here, it's pretty narrow. As you can, as you can see, it's about that wide. So not much, just a few inches, but it gives you enough space put to, to put something. Also, there is a hook here for jackets or towel or whatever you can hang there. And then there's another one right here. Now the air control is here up above. And then there's a little button here where you can control it for open and close. Um, and that will help with the airflow. Now the person upstairs might be um, cold. Now in our case, Rob is never cold. So he's happy to have this open all the time because if you close this, it gets fairly warm um, down below. And then the person upstairs, Rob also has an extra light right here that he can use as a nightlight when he's up there. You also have a mirror here that you can use to get ready and during the day we keep this bag here but at night we set it on the floor because that way it doesn't get in the way of the steps for rob and then at night you're going to pull this lever right here and you've got your bed up above and now the mattress for downstairs is stored right here this guy he goes downstairs and the mattress for up here is right there. It's kind of built in. So this top bunk is actually a little bit smaller than the one down below, but here's kind of everything here. And then back here, you've got this netting and in there you can store lots of different things. Rob likes to store various things up there, but that's uh, what we've got there. One last thing to show you here is there is another reading light on this side and you can turn it however you like and then here is a temperature control now this temperature control is not you know like gonna make it the arctic or like furnace in here it's a mild uh you know turn for you a mild difference for you but it does give you a little bit of control if you want to make it a little bit cooler or a little bit warmer and then there is one um, outlet in here which is right there and we usually carry a, an adapter with us that has four USBs on it I'll put a link to it down in the description but we use that to plug in all of our electronics so uh, we're just here in California and I'll leave you with that Rob's gonna show you guys the bathroom the showers Once you get in the bathroom, all I have to do is slide that little handle and the light will light up. That lets you know you're locked in. And this is a Superliner 1, I believe, and it has the nicer bathrooms than the Superliner 2. So if you're in a Superliner 2, see if there's a Superliner 1 you can walk through. The toilets are angled, so there's a lot more space. On the other ones, they're just kind of straight and you run out of space real quick on those. The other thing is these uh, faucets are much taller, a lot more room, and the water stays on when you hit it, which is really good. So this is probably, I'd say, one of the better Hamtrak bathrooms. You do have three of them, like I said, down here. One upstairs, there's not many people down here, so these are almost always empty. And then the shower is right across the hall. Let's go check that out. Same deal in here. You just kind of slide that lock, light comes on, and you do have a place for dirty towels. So 
Uh, no one has showered today. Have all these towels that you can put there and kind of a seat to sit on. And a pretty big shower, actually. You've got a two step process here. So, what they're telling you to do is to set the temperature here with number one and then hit the button there, push it for number two. You do that, the water's gonna come out right there. So, I'm gonna hop out before I accidentally do that because I don't wanna take a shower right now. And uh, that's a shower in Amtrak. A lot of people ask if you have to wait or have to pay or if there's a time limit. Showers are free, there is no time limit. And quite honestly, in all the Amtrak rides I've ever taken, I've never seen anyone take a shower. I have taken them though, but I've never seen anyone else getting in or getting out of it. So if you come down here and you want to take a shower, it'll almost assuredly be empty. Okay, so we're getting some beautiful views here. You can eat in the dining room, but today because we're in a room where you're getting these views that you can see out the window, we thought let's not risk it since we can see it from our room. We might as well enjoy our dinner and enjoy these gorgeous views out the window. So I picked the salmon, the Atlantic salmon. Look at how nice and crisp that looks with a nice uh, salad here quinoa salad and ancient greens we've got some green beans and some carrots and this sauce is i've had this one before and it's just really good mm. that sauce is real good and then they also gave us a roll today they don't always give you a roll but we got a roll as well so let me take a bite of this salmon which I already know is good, but let's do it anyways and just make sure that it's still good. Mmm. Oh. Mm. You're not gonna beat that. Eating a delicious meal and enjoying these gorgeous views. catching another fresh air break which we need it's really quite lovely out here we are in Santa Barbara and we are we've seen some good views we got some even better views coming up the best views guys are between Santa Barbara and Oxnard so make sure you do at least that portion of this trip and you will get the very best views that the coast starlight has to offer so you're on these trains for a long time when you get these fresh air breaks take them Move your legs, stretch out a little, a little bit so you don't retain a bunch of water sitting around eating a bunch of stuff. I did see one guy brought his jump rope. He was out here doing a jump rope. We like to walk quickly up and down the platform. And I've also seen people um, jogging up and down the platform. So there's lots of different things that you can do to get moving when you get out here. There's Rob. 
He's jogging past me. <laughs> Burbank on the Coast Starlight. What an incredible ride. Alexa brought us to Lake Hollywood Park and on this side of the park you have a view of the Hollywood sign and on this side of the park you have a view of downtown LA. So pretty great place to come. And on this side of the park you have a view of Alexa. <laughs> This is a really cool train car behind me. It is the oldest red trolley car still in existence and it serves as the restaurant. So that is where we got to eat our meal and it was quite an experience. All right, so we had a great meal here at the Formosa uh, Cafe. It is the oldest Chinese restaurant here in West Hollywood. If you come to this area, you absolutely have to eat here. It's been around since the late 1930s. It is iconic here, and a lot of the old stars would come and visit and eat here. All their pictures are inside and signed. So put this on your list of places to visit. It is a must, and it is absolutely delicious. All right, it is just after nine. We're getting ready to board. The Sunset Limited pulling in behind me. We're getting excited to head over to New Orleans. Today we bring you along as we travel on Amtrak's southernmost route, the Sunset Limited. We will travel 1,995 miles from the California mountains through the night as we make our way east into the southwestern deserts. 
We'll travel along the Mexican border to make our way to the Bayou country shortly after crossing the Mississippi River. We complete our journey through California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and finally arriving into Louisiana on day three. Our journey begins at night as we board the train near bedtime, so our beds are already made for us. We hop into bed and we are ready to leave California. We will start our journey on day two as we wake up for our first fresh air break in Arizona. Now the Sunset Limited is the oldest continuously running named train in the U.S. It has been running since 1894. It crosses the Continental Divide, the Rio Grande, as well as the Mississippi River. There are many sights to see along the way, but first, our first stop is in Tucson, Arizona for our fresh air break. Okay, we stopped for our first uh, fresh air break. We are here in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, you can see the train here behind me. We haven't had breakfast yet, but I do apologize because I was so rude and didn't even say goodnight to you last night. So we got on the train at 10 p.m. as we mentioned earlier, and basically we were ready for bed. So we just based, went back right to bed about 11 o'clock. So we didn't say goodnight to you. But anyways, here we are. Happy morning to you. We're gonna head to breakfast after we get our legs stretched out here in Tucson, Arizona. The Sunset Limited has traditional dining, so we are excited to order our favorite breakfast. The Railroad French Toast with a side of bacon is my favorite. It is served with fresh fruit on top as well as whipped cream. It is always a tasty treat and it has yet to let me down. Now Rob's choice, uh, he chooses the scrambled eggs, sausage, potatoes, and a croissant. We sit and enjoy the views of the desert in Arizona as we eat our breakfast. Now we're going to show you guys around the train starting with our room. So we've got two seats here and they are facing each other. So you've got the window in the middle and the two seats are across from one another. You've got the table here in the middle. You can pull that out if you want to get some work done. It does have some flaps that fold out as well. Now on my seat, we'll start here. There is only one outlet uh, in the Superliner roomette. So we always carry this one with his absolute favorite. You can hook up four USB items as well as plug something right into the outlet on the outside. We always travel with this. It is a universal adapter as well. So it's nice to have those four spots as well as being able to plug something into the front here. Sometimes I plug my flat iron in here to use as I'm getting ready in the morning. So this is great to have. Now you also have temperature adjustment here. Uh, you can make it cooler or warmer. It's also set to normal. Normal is gonna make it feel like the hallway temperature essentially. And then you can make it a little bit cooler, turning it to the left and a little bit warmer, turning it to the right. It's not gonna change the temperature a ton, but it will make a little bit of a difference. You'll be able to feel that. There is also a light, a reading light on this side as well. Just make sure not to point it at your partner's face across from you. Now on the other side, we've got the attendant call button as well as the control for the ceiling light and also the night light as well. And we've also got the uh, music control buttons here. Now these music control buttons don't actually control music. They do control the announcements overhead. So just make sure you check that when they are making the announcements because you can turn those announcements off in your room so that you don't hear those um, if you're trying to take a nap in the afternoon um, or whatnot. They don't make announcements at night. You do have a reading light on this side as well. Again, don't point it right at your partner's face. Now, these are the steps that Rob uses to get up to his upper bunk when he goes up there. We do use them as storage during the daytime. You've got a nice full length mirror here. And I keep my big backpack right here on this top step during the day. Now at night I set it over in the corner so it's out of the way because um, it is challenging to come down those steps if you've got something like this in the way. Rob could trip and fall down. We don't want that. Now on the other side, You've got a little trash bin here where you can um, throw your trash away. Then you have a small closet here. You've got hand towel and washcloths provided for you for your shower or just to freshen up. It is a very small closet, so there's not a lot of storage in there, but you can always just hook your jackets out here 
or there's another coat hook here in front of the closet as well. All right, time to talk upper bunk, and this is my bunk bed here. It is uh, a great place to be. You kind of have a lot of privacy up here. You don't have any windows though over here on the side, and that's kind of a bummer because I do like to look out at night. You only get those in the view liner. You won't get any windows on a super liner, which is the routes that are west of Chicago. So I do also have this uh, little net here, and in the net I keep some snacks, my headphones, some water, any medication I might need in the night, and that's good. They do also give you a blanket up here and a pillow. I've brought my trusty travel pillow with me as well. Uh, that's a good thing to have. Now, one other thing I have up here is a light right here because it is kind of hard to reach the controls. Uh, downstairs, you'd have to come down and do that. So I don't usually want to do it at night. I just leave, use that at night. And to get up and down, the best thing to do is to go in head first and go back out feet first because you've got these steps right here that you can step on and they're pretty easy to go down backwards so this is i wouldn't call this the biggest area to sleep in but it is nice and it is comfortable the bed is plenty long for most people and i, and I really like it Once you get in the bathroom, all you have to do is slide that little handle and the light will light up. That lets you know you're locked in. And this is a Superliner 1, I believe, and it has the nicer bathrooms than the Superliner 2. So if you're in a Superliner 2, see if there's a Superliner 1 you can walk through. The toilets are angled, so there's a lot more space. On the other ones, they're just kind of straight and you run out of space real quick on those. The other thing is these uh, faucets are much taller, a lot more room, and the water stays on when you hit it, which is really good. So this is probably, I'd say, one of the better Hamtrak bathrooms. You do have three of them, like I said, down here. One upstairs, there's not many people down here, so these are almost always empty. And then the shower is right across the hall. Let's go check that out. Same deal in here. You just kind of slide that lock, light comes on, and you do have a place for dirty towels, so uh, no one has showered today. You have all these towels that you can put there, and kind of a seat to sit on, and a pretty big shower, actually. You've got a two step process here, so what they're telling you to do is to set the temperature here with number one and then hit the button there, push it for number two. You do that, the water's going to come out right there. So I'm going to hop out before I actually do that because I don't want to take a shower right now. And uh, that's a shower on Amtrak. A lot of people ask if you have to wait or if to pay or if there's a time limit. Showers are free. There is no time limit. And quite honestly, in all the Amtrak rides I've ever taken, I've never seen anyone take a shower. I have taken them though, but I've never seen anyone else getting in or getting out of it. So if you come down here and you want to take a shower, it'll almost assuredly be empty.
for lunch, we opted to eat in our room and we did decide to mix things up a little bit by picking one item from the children's menu, which is the hot dog and the hamburger. And then we just split both of them and sat in our room and ate as we watched the views of the desert. We have stopped in El Paso. It is warm here, a little over 90 degrees. But there's a big treat here at the El Paso platform. That is the famous El Paso burrito lady. She is right outside the train with a cooler full of burritos. You can hop off, buy one of those from her, and it will be delicious. And again, for those passengers that wish to step off for a quick smoke, you can do so. However, we do ask you please do not smoke in front of the door. Also, for those passengers that wish to step off to stretch your legs, you can do that as well. We are running on time, so that means we can't leave the station until scheduled departure time, and that is 12.10. So, for those that feel like being risk takers, if you feel like you're 
you want to wander away from the tree, you can do that. However, that is your choice. And please be back by the train by 12 o'clock. Okay, once again. Once again, for those passengers that wish to wander away from the train, please be back by 12 o'clock. We will depart on time, and if you're not back by then, we will be leaving you behind. We have stopped here in Houston for a rather long break. Got about an hour and 20 minutes. But as you can see, it has been and is still <laughs> raining pretty heavily, so we're just kind of camped under this awning here in Houston. Not much we can go do, but we've been hanging out with our room attendant D and talking to him and having a good time. Alright guys, we made it to New Orleans and we are in the Troubadour Hotel. It is a part of the Hilton Tapestry collection. And when you walk in, you see the bathroom right here. Really spacious bathroom. We have a corner room, so we've got uh, city views, which I'll show you in just a second. Really a nice space here, great space here for a suitcase, closet to hang stuff, and a nice full length mirror. Not really sure what the deal is on the desire sign but um yeah <laughs> the light is lit uh and then we've got some really nice decor here television and um there was a seal as you walked in the door and you can see here on the remote as well where they're doing um extra cleaning here in the hotel rooms each one that we've been in we have noticed that we've also got a nice little coffee bar here there is a mini bar paid mini bar if we want that and we can get uh use these glasses and all that kind of good stuff for the bar look at this nice little seating area and a great couch here at the end of the bed and then we have a nice king bed real pretty the way it's all done up nice nightstands and then we have a preview out here of the city and everything that's going on Okay, so it's our first morning in New Orleans and Ali has asked me to find a place to go eat, which is what I usually do for us. So I found a place called Two Chicks 
It is not that far away from our hotel, so we're gonna go check that out right now and see what they have for brunch. Okay, we made it to Cafe Du Monde, um, and I got a Cafe LA, and we got some beignets. Now, I opened this bag, and I don't know if you can see this, but there's a giant chunk of powdered sugar here. Look at this thing. Let me see if ooh, I can get the whole thing out. Look at this. <laughs> okay, so let's get one out of here, and let's try it. First time actually having a beignet here at the real Cafe Du Monde. So here we go, Cafe LA and beignet. Cheers. Mm. Oh my goodness. My lips are probably really white. Just ignore that. But this is actual perfection right here. These two things should always be eaten together. That's really amazing. It just kind of melts in your mouth. There's a little bit of crunchiness on the edge of it. And that sugar just whoop, sends you over the top, which makes you not need any sugar for your coffee, which I normally put a lot of sugar in my coffee, if you know me. So cheers. Hope you guys enjoy watching me eating it. breakfast now and it is a flexible dining so we do have the uh, flexible dining menu that we ordered off of for breakfast and we got the continental breakfast which gives you a choice of lots of different things including a breakfast sandwich which is what we opted for um, and then I also got cereal with mine but you can also get yogurt and a uh, like a protein bar type thing and then they also have um, buttermilk pancakes with sausage and the three egg omelet and that comes with uh, I think bacon and potatoes or sausage and potatoes um, on the side so that's good we're gonna order some lunch from there later on but right now I am going to open up this sandwich and see what this is all about I haven't had it a long time Ooh, that was good. Oh, my 
All right, we got off here in DC, stretching our legs, and we've got the Northeast Regional on one side and we're on the other. Make sure I get on the right train when I get back on. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're back on board. I think on the right train, there's another train <laughs> next to us here too. So there's actually four trains sitting in the station loading and unloading people, but uh, I think it's time we give you guys a little room tour. So let's start right here. We've got a roomette, and this is the rear-facing seat right here, which is the one that Rob is in. And the two bottom seats actually make up the bed. So take a look here. You've got a night light, a little bit brighter light, and these are the buttons here that are going to turn that on and off. Now in this corner back here, We've got a fan slash air conditioner. We're in a tunnel here, so it's a little bit dark. There we go, we're out of the tunnel. So here is a fan, and you can set that to low, medium, and high, and it actually blows really good um, air there. There's also air coming out of this vent here, and for some reason tonight, last night, I felt some heat coming out of this one right here. So um, I'm not really sure why there was heat and air at the same time, but nonetheless. So that's this side here, and then there is a attendant button here, and here you can set the temperature. It actually has numbers, um, and we've got it set pretty cool to about, Rob's got it set to 50 degrees, <laughs> but it's not really 50 degrees Fahrenheit in here. Um, our jackets are hanging here, and there is a, a strap here to pull them in, but we don't have long jackets. And I'm storing my backpack right here with there's a little trash can there and this is where the toilet paper is stored and we'll talk about that in just a second so here is the tray that we can eat our meals at here in the room you can also play checkers if you bring a checkerboard checker pieces with you i've never seen them on board so i think you have to bring your own or you can make some probably too and they do provide water for you in the roomettes. So we've got that. And a nice view as we leave Washington, D.C. here. Let's take a look at the other side. So this is my seat here. I'm facing forward. And here we've got the announcements. You can turn it up or down. And then right here you've got your lights again. The wall one and the small reading light. Also note that with this switch you can turn that air off right there if 
flow will turn completely off. And the reason why there's toilet paper on the other side is because we have a toilet right here, right here in the room. And we also got a sink right here. Okay, and notice that there's no drain here. What happens is the water fills here, and then when you tip this up, see those little holes? It washes back and down. Just make sure you always secure that because the person up above is gonna end up standing on that and probably having quite the accident coming down. We've also got outlets here. You've got two of them, and this is where you flush the toilet, and this light lets you know when the toilet is not usable it lights up orange and there's a mirror light which lights up right here and then when the sink is down see how this lights up here that way it alerts to the person up top that they can't come down and then you've got some soap here and they give you these nice little cups which is perfect for in the morning for brushing your teeth and we've got some towels here too and there is a room light master switch here you can turn it off and on right there and that's basically what we've got down here give you another quick glance before i take you up to see rob's humble abode and that is the penthouse and listen in a view liner the penthouse is really the penthouse right rob yeah <laughs> There's so much room up here, and I just enjoyed this ride last night. Even though we got on late, I did have a good time. First thing I want to show you is where I put my stuff. And that is this huge compartment here. Uh, I've got my backpack in there. And then there was a... That's not my M&M wrapper. Someone left that from the last time in the Disney book, apparently. I don't know. It's a magazine. Uh, that was up there. Anyway, I like to put my stuff up there because you just have access to everything. You can put your headphones, your iPad, whatever, just lay it out up there. Get whatever you want, lay your snacks out. You also have this little pouch right here. Good for your glasses, snacks like that. Um, so that is amazing. One thing that's not amazing about up here though is this feature here, which is the speaker. <laughs> so if there's an announcement, it's basically right in your ear. So this morning, I think they made a mistake announcement at about 6 or 6.30. And it woke me up. She never heard it uh, because you can't really hear them very well downstairs. And uh, I was like, did you hear that announcement? She was like, no, I didn't hear it. So, uh, But also she uses uh, headphones to sleep at night. So if you want to know what those are, look in the description or on our blog, she can tell you. She uses the Bose ones and they, they do work real well. She never hears anything. Uh, another great thing we have is windows. You have windows on the view liner. You don't have those on the super liner. So if this is your first ever trip you're considering going on, this is a good one because this space is so much uh, taller than you have on a super liner. If you have two people and you're not really sure which one of you is going to be up and which one's going to be down and you're both kind of nervous about being in tight spaces, definitely try the view liner first because the super liner is like, it's literally like half the size of this. So you're, when you're laying down, you can't sit up at all. It's You just have a few inches of, of clearance even when you're laying down. So it is pretty tight. I'm used to it now and I don't mind it, but I, I really do love it when we get on this one because the window uh, is a great feature. Not much else up here other than I do have access to this air control, which is really cool. And you can turn this to change the airflow. You've got your light switches here, which frankly are confusing sometimes. When you get on the train at night, first thing I would do is try out all the buttons because like last night, it's been a while since I've been on one of these Uliner roomettes, and it was about one o'clock in the morning, and I was, this light was still on over here a little bit, and I didn't know how to turn it off. And I, I looked at all the buttons, and I was like, if I hit the wrong button, all the room lights are gonna come on, and Allie's gonna wake up, and it's gonna be bad. So I just left it on, it wasn't that bright really. But my advice to you is figure out what all these little mirror light buttons do and how bright they are before you get going before you go to bed and also figure out where you're going to step because you guys 
hit that top pink step with your first foot, that one that she's touching, if you don't hit that step, that other one right there is the toilet lid, and it's too far down to hit. If you if you miss that, unfortunately in the night, it's, it can get pretty dark in here. If you miss that, you will probably fall into the person on the bottom bunk and wake them up. So uh, I won't say if that's happened to me before, but I'm just saying, take some precaution. Uh, other than that, this is a great area. It is my favorite, uh, favorite sleeping combination. You will notice that on this end of the bed, it does kind of cut out and it is a little bit wider than on that end. So this end that I'm sitting on now is definitely the side that you want to sit on with your head, or lay down on it with your head uh, to get the most comfortable ride. But this mattress is very, very comfortable. I love it. The little uh, strap thing really holds you in well. And uh, yeah, I couldn't be more excited to be up here. And uh, I'm gonna sit up here now for a little bit and just read and listen to some music while we're uh, moving along because the window makes it possible just to sit up here during the day too.
All right, we made it to Moynihan Train Hall here in New York City, and we are about to go directly across the street to our hotel. All right, I'm at the famous art installation, The Vessel, behind me. We're gonna head over there and explore all around. You can't go up into it anymore, but we've done that before in the past when it was open and that was really cool, but we'll take you all around to take a peek at it. And then we're gonna head over to the High Line, which is really cool. And then I think we're gonna hop on the subway and go do some fun stuff. And uh, from there, we'll see what else we run into here in the city. We are big Seinfeld fans, so there's a very good chance we're gonna do some Seinfeld stuff while we're here.
All right, so we finished checking out Hudson Yards, hopped on the 7 train, and we are over here at Hunter's Point, and we're gonna try to take some pictures over here. Look at how pretty we got the sunset going back there behind us, a beautiful Pepsi sign behind me on this side, and we're gonna sit here, enjoy some views, walk around this beautiful park area. Uh, the ferry is also here, I'll show you that in a second, and I'll show you the skyline, and you can see the Queensboro Bridge as well. Check this out. Now, if you do come in the winter time, it is very nippy down here by the East River. So uh, make sure you bundle up. If you are here in the summertime, I'm sure it's completely gorgeous still. There are lots of people walking around, uh, exercising after work, walking their dogs, walking their babies. Um, this is beautiful. Tons of seating, all different types of seating along the way. And I'll also show you down the way where you can see the big pillars for the Long Island Railway. All right, we found the line for Saturday Night Live. It's Friday, I think show's tomorrow. So we could camp out here all night, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go find a diner. Got a few that we normally eat at in New York City, so we're gonna go check one of those out right now. Guys, last night we went to go see Jerry Seinfeld live at the Beacon Theater and we thought we'd stay with that theme so we came to the place where Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David came up with Seinfeld the TV show and it's this Westway diner behind me we're gonna go inside grab some food and just enjoy hanging out where one of our favorite shows was created all right we are outside b and h photo which is my favorite store in the city it's the store right behind me and it's huge it's got everything you can want if you're a photographer so if you like photography and you're in the city make sure you check this out all right our time in new york here is up we're checking out of our hotel which is the fabulous fairfield by marriott inn and suites it is directly across the street from Moynihan train hall uh, which is where we'll be leaving from i'm actually standing 
on the concourse of Moynihan right now. So we're gonna head in there. All right, we're here in one of our favorite metropolitan lounges. And one of the things that we really like about it is they do have not just um, cold food, but they also have hot food as well. So I got a couple sandwiches for us. One is a, a Santa Fe um, chicken. I think it's this one, yeah, look at that one. Santa Fe chicken, and then um, this one is spicy cheese. Look at that, that looks really good with fig, um, with fig spread, so I'm gonna be eating that. That sounds really good. And then we have this um, Caesar, chicken Caesar pinwheel, and we've got these chips, and let me tell you right now, if you're here and you get an opportunity to try these chips and you don't mind something spicy, these are amazing. Um, they also had a, uh, strawberry and mint infused water and then they also have unsweetened tea which is a no-no in the south but they have some um, flavor syrups that you can use to flavor it for different things today i did mango and then they have some uh, cane syrup if you want to sweeten it so um, i fixed that and i think we're going to dig in and enjoy this fun little spread you can gain access to the metropolitan lounge here in new york in a variety of ways one is if you have a sleeper car ticket that automatically grants you access another is if you have amtrak guest rewards and you have a high uh, membership tier status you can always get into the uh, metropolitan lounges that way and if you're coming here to new york you really do need to check this one out we think it's the best train lounge in the world it is just beautiful so many amenities and great food but take a look at the views from up here uh, from the second story Okay, so I took a peek out the window and I can see that we are passing the Hudson River, but it's on the other side of our room. So um, here's the thing is that normally you would head to the observation car, but the Lakeshore Limited does not have an observation car. And although we have pretty views off of this side, I really do want to see the Hudson. So let's take the camera out into the hallway and I'll show you where you can watch out the other side. Okay, so here is the dinner situation on the Lakeshore Limited. Uh, what they do is they split it up into two shifts here. Now, each uh, train is going to be a little bit different depending um, on, uh, you know, the timing and everything. We're on time, so they are going to split it into two because we'll be getting to Albany and have kind of 45 minute fresh air break, 40, 45 minutes for us today. Um, fresh air break there, so we're starting dinner around, they 
started it at 4.30 and they're gonna run it till about 5.45. Then they're gonna shut it down and reopen it at seven. So we've elected not to do the early dinner. We're gonna wait and do it um, till after we do the Albany stop, which is really nice. Now, uh, for the dinner on this particular train, which is the Lakeshore Limited, um, each crew does it a little bit different on this, um, this particular crew has chosen to just do like open so they have their open time and you can go and have dinner anytime during that open time so there could be a lot of people going at the time that you want to go or not it just depends and they just kind of go with the flow on that um, in some trains they'll have you do like reserve a certain a certain time so every crew does it a little bit different um, so it's kind of just something to keep in mind um, as you move along on your train ride and they haven't given us a menu yet, so we don't really know what it's going to be. Pretty sure it's flexible dining though still on Lakeshore Limited. And I am hoping there is andouille sausage. That was on there a few years ago and I took it away. I hope it's made a comeback. We'll see in a few minutes. The big question on everybody's mind is how much? How much did it cost? So I'm going to break that down for you. We actually used points to buy this trip and it cost us 22,500 Amtrak Guest Rewards points. Now, if we had paid for it, it would have been about $600 total for the two of us overnight from, we're going all the way from uh, New York to Chicago. So it would have been about 600. Translate that to points, it was 22,000. You can do it either way. If you're not in the Amtrak Guest Rewards, that's a good reason to do it because we're doing quite a few trips this uh, this summer, and we got about half of them for free with points. So that is a good deal. But $600 that includes your meals, and we also got access to the Metropolitan Lounge for free, and had some good meals in there as well. Time to check out the bathroom situation in this V-Liner 2. And it's a pretty good bathroom for Amtrak standards. This is bigger and I think more well equipped than the Superliners, either the 1 or 2 and the V-Liner 1. So let's take a look around here. The toilet is sitting at an angle, which is good because it's, it's much easier to use that way. Uh, there is a sink and I do like that there is room here. You can uh, you, know, you can brush your teeth and all that. There's some sinks on some of the other bathrooms that are the faucet is really short and it really doesn't uh, do well. When you push the button, the water actually stays on, which is another uh, bonus because it makes it way easier to brush your teeth. It's going to turn off automatically eventually, but having a stand like that is good. There is a changing table if you happen to have a young one with you, trash, some soap, and a mirror. Now there is a little light here. Uh, if you this light is on, then that means you've correctly locked the door. And if you're in here and that light is not on, sometimes it's faint, but if it's not on, the door is not locked properly and you better readjust that. So pretty good bathroom. The shower is right across the hall, so let's go check that out as well. Same deal with the shower. There's a little light right here that if that's lit up, door's locked. To lock the door, you just move this little button side to side. This shower is nice because I'm standing right here in the changing area. So there's a, there's a like a little area where you can dress, undress, get toweled off, all that, and then the actual shower. Uh, but you've got a trash can. Don't know what you'd stick in there while you're showering but you've got a little towel rack there. There are towels in here for you. They're laying uh, right there on the seat. Little bar, let's open up the shower and see what it looks like. Very big. Wow, this is one of the bigger showers I've seen on a train. So, I can get in this thing. This is a huge shower, I really like it. I think I might, uh, 
might use this tonight. This is this is really big. Uh, most of the time on Amtrak trains, you do have hot water. Some of the older cars, you know, maybe that's not going to work so well, but this being brand new, I don't think we're going to have any problems. So this is a really nice shower. I'm pretty impressed. So going to give you a quick update on our stop. So we are stopped here just past Poughkeepsie and um, we've been here for quite a, for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And then the conductor came on and said, uh, there's an accident with a different train up ahead and they're cleaning that up. So we're going to be here for at least another 30 minutes. So we're out here on the track. There's actually another train here as well, waiting for the cleanup up ahead. So everybody's just kind of walking around, stretching their legs and just getting some fresh air while we can. <laughs> It is a beautiful station, so uh, it's a good one to be stuck at. There's some cool houses over here, and the weather is just gorgeous today. Yes, it's and so good. <laughs> upstate New York in the spring. You really can't beat that. No, that's really good. <laughs> well, we've gotten some fresh air, and since we're sitting here waiting, they did keep the dining room open a little bit longer, so we decided since it's 6 15 that's pretty much dinner time so we're gonna come and uh we're gonna have our dinner here we'll show you what we get here in just a second so let's take a look at what our menu options are it is flexible dining and we've got uh five different entrees to choose from for dinner we've got the uh, slow braised beef short ribs enchiladas chicken a la rosa sesame glazed salmon and pasta and meatballs and we also have our beverages here you do have unlimited uh like soft drinks and juices and water and then you each get one alcoholic beverage per person per ride okay so let's take a look at what rob and i chose i of course picked the salmon with jasmine rice and veggies i've got my it, all the dishes come with a side salad and you also get a roll as well as dessert now they've had this is a new one it's a butter cake rob took his out it's a butter cake uh, pastry uh, of a um, bakery in delaware so that's going to be interesting also rob got the pasta and meatballs um, and he got his salad and his roll as well so we're going to dig into this because it looks good it smells good and i'm thinking it's going to taste good Pasta and meatballs, you can never go wrong with the Amtrak pasta and meatballs. If you're on a flexible dining, that's my choice. Allie will tell you to get the salmon, but this is where it's at, so this is pretty good. I wonder if it's hot. No, it's pretty hot. <laughs> but very, very good. So I've got that, a roll, a salad, and a new dessert which looks pretty good. And there is a train next to us, another Amtrak train. They're stuck here too, waiting for this uh, accident to get cleared up ahead of us. And apparently the line is so long in the cafe over there that people are jumping off of that train, coming into our train to the dining car and trying to get uh, beverages from the staff here. So they had a pretty good laugh about that. But we are some of the only people in here. There's only a few people in the dining car here for us. So we are uh, just having a nice dinner and enjoying that. Enjoying, there's a little bit of a view <laughs> of the lake, but not much. And uh, hopefully we'll get back rolling here pretty soon. Ooh, there's cream here in the middle. That looks quite good, actually. up so it's easier to eat. Let's try it. Mmm. Oh my gosh, that's really good. Mm. Mm. Cream filling. Butter cake, it says. We get this question a lot about tipping and we just ate dinner so I thought I'd cover it. 
generally people leave two to three dollars per person per meal so we just ate and we split the difference in lots of five and there are two attendants in there so we just leave it each uh, meal instead of at the end and then with the uh, room attendant we do either five or ten dollars per person per night so that's what we do with tipping and that's totally up to everyone though you don't have to tip or you could tip more than that if you wanted to it is clearly nighttime outside it's about 8 11 and we went ahead and ate dinner we got off the train we're waiting for this situation to clear we're still in Rhinecliff, so we're definitely we haven't even made albany yet so i was going to check and see what it said and uh it's saying right now that we should be there at 8 11 which it is 8 11 so that's not going to happen they're going to update it in a little while and we're going to be at least two and a half to three hours late just getting to albany which is not that far from new york city so we're definitely going to be late getting into chicago tomorrow i don't know how how late but this is a good thing to learn from our trip you do not want to ever make a tight connection on an amtrak trip because you can expect to be two three four hours late on most of the overnight sleepers that's just what happens because there's so many things that can go wrong unfortunately this one was some type of accident with a train in front of us but there could be cargo trains there could be uh, equipment failure so many things can go wrong that you just don't want to make a tight connection so it's not bad for us i mean we were getting in at 10 o'clock tomorrow to chicago now we'll probably get in more like noon and that just means we can check into our hotel right away so uh just don't have anything you have to do right when you get there because you will probably be just a little bit late okay ali is asleep and it is getting pretty late so i'm gonna go to bed too we're still a little jet lagged uh from our italy trip so it's time to turn these lights off and get ready to go to sleep and we will see you tomorrow at breakfast good night well good morning <laughs> we slept quite well looks like we made up a little bit of time last night but we're still running a little bit late but it is breakfast time. We are uh, in Toledo, Ohio here, stopped for a few moments, and we've got our breakfast. I'm having the three egg omelet, and it's got some veggies and cheese inside. Comes with sausage and some potatoes, and I've had this before, and it is quite tasty. And then we've got the Flexible Dining Railroad French toast and it comes with bacon and that bacon looks good because it's nice and crispy. I love crispy bacon. Um, so we're going to dig into this and enjoy it and then start to enjoy some of these views as we start arriving into Chicago here in the next few hours. People always ask me about the coffee on Amtrak, like what it's like. Now, if you're a super coffee snob, then you might not like it. It is good coffee. I think it's better than airline coffee in all honesty, and I've had both a ton. Um, so I would definitely go ahead and get it. Don't skip it, because it is pretty good.
All right, made it to Chicago. We are walking to our hotel, which is the Hampton Inn River North. And usually we stay closer to Union Station, but today, this week we're gonna visit our son. He lives a little bit north, so we are walking up there. It's about a mile. So we're gonna walk up there now and see what this hotel is like. All right, Hampton Inn River North. We're in the room. It's, it's Chicago, so it's not gonna be a huge room, but it's a nice room. And we are right by the river. Great location. This is what it looks like. Big bed here, little desk area over here, and a bathroom in there. That's about it. We're gonna go out and try to find some food and uh, walk around the city a little bit.